Okay, the recording is going now. Hey, this is Kirsten Klug in Mario Island, and we are creating a webinar here for you that I'm really excited about. It is going to help you understand how we learn. It's inclusion learning, so for everyone, and how we can connect on a deeper sense. So a couple years ago, I was, I'm a soccer coach. I've played soccer most of my life, and also I ski raced, and I'm a ski racing coach. Well, I was working with a kid on how to dribble the soccer ball, and he was autistic and, um, and had some real learning challenges. And what I was noticing when he was dribbling the soccer ball is he couldn't quite get the ball to go between his legs, and he was moving his body real uniquely. And so I have this ability to get down and really like see how everything is working together and how we learn. And I said to him, I said, what if you just bend your elbows? So I helped him like bend his elbows because then it allowed his legs to bend and him, his whole body to work together. So this boy has gone on and is now playing soccer in high school. Wow. So this is quite a few years later, you know, he's an outstanding <clears throat> soccer player. But in the beginning, initially, if someone hadn't looked at his, how his whole body was working together, he would have just kind of been pushed aside as someone different, right? Absolutely. And so um, I'm here with Mario, and he has had a similar experience in wrestling. Um, you did wrestling in high school, and you told me a really neat story about how um, your coach helped you learn. And so yes. can you share with me a, a little, or share with this audience a little bit more about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So um, as you might be able to tell, I'm blind, and I've uh, been I've been blind for the for most of my life, but one of the things that I and and, and retrospect, um, it's funny because I have, as I say, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and when I look and in, in retrospect and and understand why people did what they did, I began to appreciate and begin to understand how fortunate I was, the the people that I've come across in my in my life. Oh. Uh, specifically, in this case, um, my sport. My sport was wrestling. Uh -huh. I remember in in high school, um, I had a coach, and he he would always, when whenever he was going to introduce a new move, a rest, a new wrestling move, uh -huh. he would ask me to come up to uh, up in the middle of the mat, and uh, use me as the quote, quote, dummy, right, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to show the move. Uh -huh. And, I mean, yes, of course, we uh, could have had somebody, uh, a, uh, another classmate uh, of mine go in there and show me the, the move. But, you know, why go through another step? Uh, rather than just have it directly from the coach, he'd be showing me and all the other, the rest of the, the wrestlers would just be watching and, and they can just learn it from that. And, and the cool thing with that, too, it also allowed me to, uh, help them too because then I, I, I got it firsthand right. and I knew how that I knew how the move went and I was able to help others as well right. so right. in retrospect I'm like wow that was really that was the that was the cool idea that he, uh -huh. he used me to to um, to teach the the the, um, the wrestling team and I was included on it right. you know right and the reason that we're bringing up these ideas about the multisensory and why that's so important, you know, of course, Mario can't see as, and some people have low vision and some people can't hear and there's all different ways, but being able to incorporate that multisensory learning um, allows people to um, feel included. Yes. Right? And, and then that, also, and that's exactly right. yeah, and gives you that ability to learn more in more than one way. And so the reason we're sharing this is also because it goes into technology as well, because mm -hmm. technology is assisting us in being able to learn and hear and listen and see in maybe different ways that hadn't been available before. Absolutely. And, um, you know, that brings up the next part that I want to talk about is like with our families and our kids. Um, my, um, children are like dyslexic and um, we've got dysgraphia and dyscalculia which is like learning math is dyscalculia 
dysgraphia mm -hmm. is learning your words. And so like my son, for instance, will leave um, certain words or letters out of his words when he writes. So it's hard to read his writing. Mm -hmm. And then he's challenged that um, like if he were to do something online, the text to speech, the programs wouldn't understand what he had typed in because it's missing letters. Mm -hmm. So he has some challenges there. And then with the dyslexia, which he's overcoming, he's in fifth grade, he's doing a great job. Um, and we have to really work with teachers and everyone to get on the same page. But if he can partner up with someone like he's in the Montessori school, he can partner up with someone else that's really good in another strength, then he can really get his message out because he's an amazing storyteller. And he's amazing at um, coming up with big concepts and little details and getting all that out. But we have to work with everyone in his learning environment so that he can excel. Mm -hmm. And um, and so if uh, Mario, can you tell a little story about your children as well? Yeah, so I have two daughters. Uh -huh. um, and my my eldest daughter who's 16, she, she is fully sighted. She has no... Uh, visible or invisible disabilities that we can tell at this point uh -huh. but my youngest daughter is 11 her name is jasmine okay. and she uh she was born with a condition called peter's anomaly basically what what it is it's a it's a triple whammy against the eyes so she has glaucoma the scarring of the cornea and uh, um the and the retina detachment of the retina oh wow so um uh -huh. The doctor explained it as kind of like imagine imagine an egg and being squished. That's how the eyes, uh, what happens to the eyes okay. with this uh, Peter's anomaly condition. But Jasmine, um, but one of the things that we've done uh, within Jasmine's education is that we always we always share with the teachers. We get together every single year uh -huh. um, with the teacher and explain how we how we learn as as blind people as i mentioned before to kirsten that as blind people we learn yes we can learn by hearing we can learn all that but but we also learn by experience mm -hmm. so we have to experience that and so um so whenever we got get together uh, with the teachers we say you know be more be more verbal be more descriptive and when you're doing math don't just say you take this away from this over here and then take this number and put it over here. You cannot do that because that doesn't tell us anything. Okay. So they have to say, take uh, number two, put it over here to the right under number three, whatever it might be, right? Okay. So be, be very descriptive with okay. that. And also with uh, class participation, when kids raise their hands, to have the teacher call the students by their name, not just point at the student and say, what, you know? Yeah. Because then that way, uh, Jasmine would be able to, or anybody uh, in that situation, would be able to put the the name together with the with the voice, or as we might say for the sighted folks, they can put the face together, the face together with the with the person yeah. or the name, mm -hmm. um, the name with the face, yeah. that kind of thing. So, um, and th and those and those are kind of just uh, little things that you know people don't don't know or uh, that you know, that they take for granted at times right. because yeah. they, uh, you know, everybody's sighted and most people are sighted and mm -hmm. they don't take those things into consideration. But we, but as I mentioned before, you know, my wife is also blind and I'm blind. We've been around the block a couple of times. We know how we learn and, yeah. and we try to share that with our, with our teachers, instructors or anybody else or even our colleagues here. I and mean, that's one of the things that we do. One of the things that I do here is what we call this blindness 101, kind of go talk about uh, uh, what we call blind etiquette, how to, how to approach somebody who's blind and, and so on. Right, what is the best way to approach someone that's blind? The best way to apply, uh, um, you, you uh, approach them, mm -hmm. and if you see them that, depends on what it is. So if you want to um, help them out, just say, Tell them who you are, uh -huh. and ask them. You know, is, is this something that I can do for you? Do you need assistance? Uh, would you like assistance? Uh, and of course, you know, we'll say yes or no, or and they will let you know. 
because yeah. <laughs> but many times what happens is people may if they think that we might need help they'll grab us by the elbow <laughs> or sometimes they'll grab us by our, by our, even by our, our necks and push okay. us forward and okay. and you know they think that we know they think that they know better than we do you know yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so um yeah. Yeah, so the best way is just to go to a personal person and say, hello, my name is uh, so-and-so, and uh, is there anything that I, may, that I might be able to help you with? Do you have anyone approach you that starts speaking really loud? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think that, or, or yeah, that happens uh, quite often. Or okay. if I'm at a restaurant with my sighted friends, they'll, they, won't, as they won't talk to me directly. They will talk to my sighted friends. Oh. And so I've I've taught my friends that uh -huh. if somebody if anybody does that say hey he can talk too, uh -huh. and talk to him. Right. Um, that have that happens quite often. Right. Um, yeah. And I or, think the uh, important part is just like not assuming, right? Yes. You know, it's like really asking. If we just can ask whoever we're speaking to, whatever is happening. If you, if if um even like when we're doing this interview here. Um, you know, I kind of talked you through it. Like I'm turning the video on, I'm turning the video off. Mm -hmm. I think that's important for everyone, you know, um, regardless, just so we are on the same page. And I, I find sometimes even like in, um, you know, maybe people lead conferences, maybe they're a speaker. And the more that we can think about the multi-sensory, how are we incorporating multi-sensory into the whole conference or the keynote speech that we're doing or whatever it is um the better off we're going to be overall because then we're connecting with everyone yes i once had i was at a workshop and i loved this i just loved this we all sat down and we had like folders on our on our chairs mm -hmm. and the person started off the talk with if you don't like the color or the feel of the folder you can trade with somebody and okay. that was really neat because and the she actually had created these folders some of them were like a little more like velvety paper oh, on yeah. the folder and some uh -huh. were real shiny glossy mm -hmm. and some were just regular um cotton you know paper sure. so it was a combination of what they looked like in a color and then what they felt like and different people like different things. And I just love that because it, again, it's like you allow um, people to connect and then make a decision for themselves versus assuming everyone needs this. Right. Right. That's, that's, that's cool. That's a cool yeah. exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. And so as far as technology goes, because so much of what we do now is technology. So you have, um, you know, my kids are on their iPhones and I'm sure your kids are on their iPhones um, and adults. And there's some really neat technology with iPhones that help us to be all inclusive. Um, can you highlight some different applications or ass assistive technology that's good? Absolutely. Um, so there, there are different aspects of technology. I mean, I can talk about Windows, I can talk about the iOS, which is the, the handheld, like okay. the iPhone, iPads, and iTouch, iPod, iPod touches and those. Um, but uh, just briefly, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so the, for the Windows, uh, we have third party, what we call screen readers, or okay. what uh, you, Kirsten, been referring to as um, text-to-speech. Okay. So, so here's my computer. You know, you can hear that. That's my computer. That if um, that if I needed to do something, it's gonna talk back to me. Let me know what's going on. Uh -huh. um, so we have that, and that's and and we can include, as I mentioned before, uh, Braille. And the Braille um, aspect is, you know, we have dots on a on a on a Braille uh, device like this, so that I can proofread. Um, whatever might be coming up on my on my computer, okay. if the speech may 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 pronounce it a little wrong, or or actually sometimes for just telephone numbers, maybe I don't want the speech to be announcing the numbers. I can just simply read it here in Braille, okay. Okay. Right? Right. right? Many times these Braille devices are used in in more in a uh, customer service customer service uh, situation because. Okay. So maybe the, the the 
the customer service customer service rep is not that doesn't have to listen to the speech okay and the customer sometimes is difficulty you know difficult okay. Got it. Uh, but rather listen to the customer and then be able to read <laughs> that kind Got of thing. Okay. Um, also we have uh, maybe I can talk about my my phone here okay. so this is my iPhone okay and so I'm gonna turn it up so and then slow it down so people can understand here. So I have um, right now I think I have the what's called the screen curtain on, so it's it's dark, right? Screen curtain off. So I just took it off. So what that is is if I'm in a situation where I have my earbuds in or something, and that way I can turn my screen. Screen curtain off. Copy to clipboard. Screen curtain on. So that, that way, nobody can just look over my shoulder and see what I'm doing, right? Okay, right. It's pretty cool. Screen but, curtain off, seeing AI. But the cool thing is there's like a, an app called Seeing AI. Okay. With, this, with this app, seeing I can, AI. Seeing AI. Menu. I can okay. read things by just hold, holding it like, I can, let me see what my screen says right Advanced. here. Smart people. I can read my, my screen here, let me go over here. I'm pointing it to the right. Quick app menu. A quick pause announcement. Recognizing English. I have more. So. Channel. Samsung. Samsung. X2000. Samsung. So, so I'm pointing to the screen. So it'll read, read me that. It, this I can that right? Samsung? It's reading what it sees. Master. Sync Master Pay 370. Yeah, it's reading this, the, the monitor right here. Uh-huh. Um, or like over here, actually, let me turn on this monitor. I have like three monitors. <laughs> so, so, but this one over here, let's see, I might see, let's see if it'll uh, read the Zoom. Okay. It's coming on here. Um, but while that's coming up, let me grab a piece of paper. Okay. All right. Okay. It's a book. Um, <laughs> And I can put it on my lap here. Uh -huh. A visual acuity. Area is B. A static. Three. Uh -huh. White. A. Our actual Scott on the B. C. Arcuate. So, or Bureau. This, this is a uh, technical book on eye conditions. Uh huh. So I can. Quality. Lenses. In. Thin. Thin MM. And disadvantages of these thinner. In 14 bullet three, both in and ultra thin. So it's just, but it, what it does, it just gives me the idea of what I'm reading, right? Right. And, and that is called, what is the name of that software? I'll include it. I'll, I'll put so, it in Yeah, that one is, that one is for the iPhones. It's called, it's, let me. Yeah. It's called Seeing, it's like S E E I N G A I. Okay. And, um, and then another one, and Prod. part of this program, it has um, Person. Currency. 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 So like if, if somebody hands me a, a, a bill, a, a uh -huh. dollar bill, and if I, I need to know. how rich you are, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I can, I can take this dollar bill and say, okay, let me see what it says. Just to uh -huh. verify, uh -huh. I can. Five US dollars. Oh. See? It reads me cool. the dollar bill. Oh, how neat. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Really awesome. Yeah, because like our currency in America is all, all the bills are the same size. Exactly. And I know in other countries, they make the bills specifically different sizes to help with, um, you know, people. Yeah. When I was in, I, when I traveled, I think I may have um, mentioned this to you, Kirsten, when I, when I was in college, uh -huh. I had the opportunity to travel to Germany. Okay. And so at that point, this was before the Euro um, uh, was implemented. Uh -huh. And they had the Deutsche Mark. And the Deutsche Mark, uh -huh. they had different sizes. So what, the, what I had is somebody gave me this little uh, plastic thing that would fold in half. Right. And so um, I can put the, I would put the, the bill in there and then wherever when I folded it like this and wherever the edge landed there was like numbers like it would say 20 50 100 and so wherever the edge of the bill landed as I folded it 
-huh. And that's what it was. So if it landed on a hundred, uh -huh. then it was a hundred Deutsche Mark. If it uh -huh. landed on the, yeah, it was kind of interesting. It was oh, just a little beautiful. piece of plastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's neat. See, they're yeah. always coming up with products that are neat. And so technology and uh, Mario here does a lot with assistive technology for all the people that you work with and help people um, if they're just newly blind or yes. if, you know, and getting into the workspace so that they can also um, excel in their job and, and the people working with others can also excel. So wonderful. Yeah. And then uh, there's another app here Joe, um, that I think is really neat. Um, Seeing AI, Ira. When it, it's called Ira. Ira. And what Ira is A-I-R-A. -A. What Ira does is you can, it, it gets you connected to somebody on the other end. Okay. And then that person can, uh, can see um, via your camera, okay. whatever task you want to complete. Okay. Uh, so for example, th this was really neat. The other day, my, um, my wife uh -huh. needed to do a PowerPoint. Okay. And she does not like PowerPoint because it's so graphical uh -huh. and it's really hard to format and not being able to see it. Okay. So what I, what I said is, well, why don't we use Ira? You know, you can, uh -huh. you can write down your points okay. in the Word document. Say okay. slide one and then your points, slide two and then your points. And then we'll, what we'll do is Ira will, what, what they do is then you can email the, your um, content to them. Okay. And then they would put that content in a PowerPoint for you and then email it back to you. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's, so, cool. it's so darn awesome. Oh, and so wow. I said, let's do that. So, so we did that. And uh -huh. guess what? And she got 100% on it. And, oh my gosh! Yeah, it was so that kind of technology is, is, is like what's is so so awesome. These new things that they're coming up with. Right, right. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's mm -hmm. neat. Um, what would you say as far as um, the best way to communicate? Um, uh, what am I gonna say to someone like? Like, say somebody is coming out as a coach or a speaker or a um, consultant, and they want to put, um, they're communicating information, they're educating um, their audience, mm -hmm. and they want to get their material out from their brain or from their experiences. Um, do you find it's best to do, like, just say, um, like, you know, some people are like about podcasts or about you know, like this, a webinar or a book, or do, do you feel it's important to do all of it? Or it really, I think so. Um, some people may choose, uh, they may have a preference in the media, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, now one of the things that I, um, uh, I think people use a lot is YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. YouTube, I think it's a, it's a great uh, uh, medium. Okay. where they can go in there and you you have not only you have the visual aspect but you also have the audio okay. part uh -huh. and so you can do demonstrations but then but then also you can do the the audio and and if they wanted to um Oops, add on the know. screen <laughs> what's that, that? My cat just jumped on screen. Her <laughs> tail, her tail fun. went through the screen. She liked what you were saying. <laughs> oh, good, good. At least we got an audience there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, you know that they can add that or, or like have captions or even add a uh, transcript okay. to it. You know. Okay. And with right. the podcast, you know, we can just, people can load, uh, talk about it, and have discussions. Oh, you know, all those things are good. Okay. Um, the book thing is good too, <laughs> um, but I would think that you know more, more, more and more everything's becoming so digital, right? Uh, or it is digital, and uh, that that would be a good way to. Um, sometimes what I do on Facebook okay. is I would put stuff out there. I don't I stuff about how to approach a blind person, or these are seventeen things that we can approach a blind person. You know things like that. Right. Uh, right. Um. No, I mean any. I think any of those are good to okay. um, to use. Okay, it's just, really great. It's, it's just yeah. nice and comforting to me to know that whatever I'm putting out there, there's technology mm -hmm. that's allowing it to be easier to understand. 
Absolutely. And, yeah. um, so and, in your case, Kirsten, if you wanted to put, you know, utilize YouTube, uh -huh. so as long as it's, it's well described, you know, okay. you're, you're, you're verbalizing everything on the YouTube and mm -hmm. uh, this dialogue, you know, it, it's, it's great. But I have found where, uh, for example, when I'm looking for, um, if, if I ran into a situation with my computer and I need to do something and I see, oh, yeah, there's, there's a, a video that talks about how to resolve that particular issue. Uh -huh. I launched a video and all I hear is music. No, uh -huh. there's no word, there's no dialogue, there's nothing. Uh -huh. But of course, what's on the screen? I'm sure there's you know. Oh right, uh, like the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, there's text on the weird, screen, but right? You can't read but, it. But you can't see it. You and, can't hear it. Exactly. Oh, it's yeah. just graphics. Yeah. Yes. That's so true. And then I was gonna say, um, sometimes the technology world can be messy and busy because mm -hmm. I believe a lot of photos. If people like title their photos or put it in. Um, as a tag, does that come up? How do you, you know, like if you see a photo, does it come up and say, you know, like in the yes. back, I have behind me an image of palm trees. And so sometimes I wonder, does it show palm trees behind Kirsten? Or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, there's, there's something called uh, um, alt text, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alternative text that can be put uh, behind the picture. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. And so many times, of course, they're not, they're not seeing that text is not that content or that text is not seen by, you know, by the sighted person unless they go and look at the, the, the what, what they call the description or something. That yeah. Behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually the screen reader will, will pull that up. We'll see that. And then it, and it helps out. So many times so it'll say, uh, let's say if it's a, of, uh, a picture of you and your cat, you know, uh -huh. and Good. there's an alt tag, an alt text that will say, um, Kirsten and her cat. Okay. The person, the, 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 the sighted person may not see that description, but uh -huh. the screen reader, you know, that text to speech uh -huh. will see that. And okay. Like, oh, okay. So there's a picture of Kirsten with her cat. You know. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be and fun to look at your how you hear what Facebook is like, say for instance, or LinkedIn or something like that, versus uh -huh. how I see it. You know what I mean? Sure. I read it. So it has a totally different approach. But yet do you still feel connected to people through um technology? Yes, uh, and face on Facebook, I mainly use Facebook. I don't use Instagram or Snapchat or uh, LinkedIn, uh, not as much. Uh -huh. uh, if I do get on on social media, it's 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 uh, Facebook. Right. Uh, Facebook has um, or is coming out with technology that I'm sorry. No worries. Come up with technology that will that will try to describe a photo uh -huh. and so so we'll say uh, a person standing in front of trees tables and grass oh yeah <laughs> yeah so definitely and at least it gives you the gist right uh -huh. of what of what's out there or or uh -huh. um i have a friend uh or she's a colleague and she um uh -huh. and she also what she'll there's a way to put alt tag Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking all text on okay. the on the pictures that people post or that you post, uh -huh. and so she does that all the time. So she'll say whatever, you know. One, mm -hmm. Like I think last time she put something about uh, Laura and John holding up a fish because oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were fishing up up at the Sunwon Islands or something uh -huh. up there. Somewhere. Oh neat! Yeah. 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 So that so yeah so you can do that so you can do it manually or you, or you can just have the the Facebook uh, engine uh, technology do that for you too. Uh -huh. Right. But sometimes there's maybe it just says all I say, all, all all I will say is just photo 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 photo. You know? okay. <laughs> that Boring. doesn't help any. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't help. Um, uh, as being a leader, um, you know, can you explain a little bit more about um, 
the mindset, you know, I want to get into a little bit of the mindset that it takes to be a leader, regardless if we can see or not see. Um, what are some um, things that you do, the courage, um, being resilient? Um, yeah, I think a leader, um, one of the things that I've, I mean, people think I'm a leader, but I don't know if it's that I, I would consider myself a leader. Um, but maybe that is what uh, I um, I exude, I guess. But <laughs> oh my God, um, my because my my thing is um, <laughs> my cat's going crazy. <laughs> what's that? Oh, my cat. cat is going crazy. <laughs> like almost knocked the cookies off the. Oh no! <laughs> off the top. <laughs> when it hears my voice, huh? I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Keep speaking. No, I was just saying that. Um, my my thing is i like to i like to take the initiative in areas that i think that are lacking so for example okay. uh, we're talking about um describing or we're talking about more verbalization in aspects or maybe we're talking about transportation uh and what i've learned in my as the as the older I've gotten and hopefully a little wiser <laughs> is that rather than rather than complain, uh -huh. why don't I just try to do something about it? Right? Uh -huh. That's the way I look at it as a, as a leadership that I am. The leadership that I the 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 trait that I people tell me I have is uh -huh. more of let's let's do something and let's not complain about it. Right. And see if we can do and or helping out people. one of the things I enjoy doing is helping people out. Right. I don't know where that comes from and why I do it. I think it's just that um, it's a it's a it makes me feel good to right. be able to help someone else. Right. And also, when people help me, mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's more about what's that term? It's a forward thing, you know, where somebody it's helps me. Worker. Right. Yes. Right. Like and you're helping I, this person out, and then someone, and then you help someone, and they help someone, and exactly. then it all comes back. Yes, and that's because in my lifetime, as I mentioned before, you know, I've been very fortunate to to have people help me and give me the support system, and people believe in me, and I want to give that back and say, I believe in you too. I believe in this this other person. I believe that they can, you can do it, and encourage. I mean, this is one of the things I love about this this job. Kirsten that I do as an assistive technology specialist people come in here uh -huh. literally what as they that term with their legs be, with with their tail between their legs oh, I mean they're like yeah, right. they're like are oh, they sad they're depressed I'm blind I just went blind it's, it's devastating and I can imagine so right because to them all they know all they know is how life was when when they could see right. now they can't see how can I how can I live the rest of my life it's learning um, to be the new, I call it the new you. Um, the exactly. New you, you know, a new normal, that, right? The new normal. Yeah. So I, you know, I think I've explained, but I, I was in some traumatic events where I was in some um, bad car accidents. I hit my head. I got bad concussion, got a mm -hmm. traumatic brain injury out of it. And it caused issues with my sight, issues with my speech. Um, you know, so I have some speech impediments. I say funny things. Um, at the beginning, when I would say funny things, to me, it was really hard sure. because it wasn't me. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. So like, wow. um, I was dry, we were driving down the road and there was someone like coming out of the sky and I was like, oh my gosh, look, there's someone falling out of the sky. Uh. And everyone in the car was like, what? There's <laughs> nobody falling out of the sky. I'm like, what is that called? I can't think about it. You know what? Yeah. The was and we kept like and they couldn't see it it was just like out of my window so we finally got to the word parachute they were parachuting <laughs> out oh, of the sky yeah. you know or um you know i will say funny things like um we were at sushi with my kids and i said to my son don't forget to use your pork chops and he looked at me like your pork chops and i'm like yeah those two sticks the pork chops and they're like oh your chopsticks, chopsticks chopsticks yes. mom those are chopsticks yes. so um luckily i've been able to work with a speech therapist who has helped me learn how to laugh and mm -hmm. i find that um as myself i laughing laughter 
in the new me is so important because, sure. you know, I'm, I'm doing funny things. I'm responding differently. The double vision, if my eyes get tired, um, it makes it difficult to read things. So I've also learned how to use some technology to help out. Sure. With that. Sure. And I was having troubles on my computer finding things. I would get really lost, I think, because of the double vision and the memory. So for a while, I just would avoid the computer. Mm -hmm. I would avoid a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily, you know, I got to work with some therapists that helped me simplify and yeah. create folders so you can find them how you remember them. Yes. Um, so you probably help people um, learn those tech, those, what might seem little, but they're huge. You yes. Know? Yes. So yeah. It's or organization. Started, instead of saying like, a, mm -hmm. you know, before I would put them like maybe by the date mm -hmm. of what I was working on and I changed it. So my folders are by the name. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are, uh, yeah, I definitely, that's, I, I, I teach those, uh, uh, I used to be a computer teacher, um, mm -hmm. but I do, yeah, I talk to them about that, you know, or somebody says, well, I did, I was doing this, and and now I, I don't know what happened, and, you know, and, and the, the cool thing is, it's, it's kind of one of those things where I have experienced it, I know how it is, uh -huh. they're new at it, I want to share that. Right. You know, so it makes it easier for them. Right. Uh, I think, and a leader is someone, I think, uh, someone that can share their, um, their, their, what, what I want to say, not their, I guess you can say kind of like their, share their, their tricks, their, their, what they've learned. Like their but, expertise, but more their, than that, maybe their experiences, their, their yes. skills. Um, and not to look down on them. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to do that, and and you, you and you want to create the rapport with 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 people, and, uh -huh. and so that then you're able to easier teach them, and and gain credibility mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. the way I I feel that it's best way to teach someone, and not come as someone as a, someone who who thinks and that they know better than anybody else. Right. And that's, I think that in my, uh, in my latter part of my life, you know, that's what, that's the, what my approach has been is, you know, try to, try to come across uh, that way, helpful, not being saying, hey, I know better than you, so let me teach you. Right, it's really asking of, the questions, like what's yes. the best way for you to learn? Yes, exactly. You know, like, what are some things that have worked for you in the past or haven't worked for you in the past? And let's talk through that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share or uh, to help people so they communicate more effectively or efficiently when we're including everyone and being inclusive? I think that one of the things that, um, we, I feel that it's very important is empathy. Okay. Empathy and also looking at the human part of the of each person. Uh -huh. Go beyond the, if we're talking about disabilities or talking about, I don't know, we can say deformities, talking about anything, anything like that. Let's, let's, let's touch the, the human part of the person uh -huh. and then adjust to their uh let's say inabilities right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that's i think that's the, the trick there to to be able to include any any anybody in your life doesn't matter who they are right, right. right. it could be in the business world it could be in in just a, in a, in a friendship a friendship situation and a family situation right you no, know, and and I think that's what that's what it takes, you know, to to be able to uh, build that the that rapport and the relationship with with anybody and and be inclusive with with everybody. Right, and I remember when I was a kid and I learned about empathy for the first time, and I remember who was teaching me about it um, 
was like, put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And that's easy if you can feel what their shoes feel like. But if you have no idea what their shoes feel like, then I really remember the real true empathy part is like asking so many questions so we can better understand what it's like in their exactly. shoes. Yes. One of the things that I like, uh, I do, um, I give presentations on accessibility, uh -huh. web accessibility, or as I mentioned before about uh, blind etiquette, right? Uh -huh. right. Blindness etiquette. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> one of the things that I, I, I always like to bring up is uh, empathy. Okay. Or, or they're talking about the accessibility. I uh -huh. know people who bring up the idea, okay, if you don't do this, you know, there's that ADA and there's this law, this policy. So uh, you'll get hammered if you don't do things correctly. Uh -huh. that, that is not my approach. Uh -huh. My approach is always, let's talk about, let's talk about the, these, these issues. Uh -huh. And let me show you why it's important that accessibility be part of your system, right? right. Uh -huh. As I was mentioning before, the learning management systems for for uh, our state, you know, okay. why? Is, because because what I heard was people were like, "Why do we need to do that? What what should we do that? What is the blind? I mean, how many blind people are out there? Or who's going to care about the accessibility accessibility yeah. component, right?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so what I did is that. Uh, it's you know we had a I don't know, I don't know a group of like 200 people uh -huh. and I said let's talk about this and I showed them I said let's grab one of these these learning management modules and let me see uh -huh. and let me show you how I navigate but of uh -huh. course it was you know one of those not not a good one where it was it was not accessible and it was really hard and I spent you know 20 minutes trying to figure out where I was at and that kind of thing you know uh -huh. and so they understood at that point oh that's why we need to make things accessible. So people like Mario, right? right. Personalize it, right? right? So people like Mario can, is able to also take part of those modules. Right. That kind of thing. So right. that, that's, that's just my approach. That's rather than saying, oh, you, you know, you're doing it as illegally. No, mm -hmm. that's not, I don't like doing it that, that way. Mm -hmm. I don't like threatening people. I like to rather just throw that, um, show them that the human part, and and try to get it with, get with me in the same same like you said in my shoes. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. And the more that we can see in your shoes, the more we can understand how to make it all inclusive. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, yep. Wonderful. Well, I think this has been great. I have some resources I've written down that we can okay. share with people. I have. Um, Maybe we can make, you may even already have a list of some blind etiquette that we could share like as a PDF. Yeah, actually I have, um, I think what would be good, I have some, a um, couple documents. Okay. What I can do is I can um, email those to you. Okay. There um, the are a couple of them. One of them, it's more related to, you know, jobs. Okay. Like employment and it's more really, it's more toward, uh, it's geared towards the employer. Okay. Um, it's really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the other one is about you know the the blindness thing, like how to approach somebody who's blind, okay. how to um, you know not to grab somebody's cane, don't grab somebody by their cane, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Things yeah. you would think is common sense, but people do it anyway. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, well, I'll send those to you. That would be great. I was gonna say, even when I'm like walking with friends that are blind, I always ask them ahead of time. Even every time I see them. Because it might change, you know, just like, like my opinions or what I like today might be different tomorrow. Sure. So I always try and ask every time I'm with them and like, like today, would you like me to point out when we're, you know, going upstairs or going downstairs or, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it is, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, one of my friends that's blind always laughs. He goes, the funniest thing that I have in buildings is when you get to the bathroom and then there's a sign that says this is a bathroom he always thinks that's funny like um <laughs> that it's like wheelchair accessible but you don't know it unless you knew to touch the sign right there <laughs> that it says oh, it's accessible. Accessible. you know he yeah. always laughs at that one and um and i learned a lot gosh you know i was in a wheelchair for like four months 
Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about how frustrating it is navigating the world out there oh, sure. in a wheelchair. Yes. Um, because like you can walk down, I was in one neighborhood, I think in Oregon city and there were like leaves or something all over the ground and you couldn't see how uneven the trail was. Yeah. You know, and you probably have that when you're walking, like, um, it, it would be so cool. Maybe that's something we can invent, <laughs> you know, something that comes up to tell us that, Hey, you're coming up to a, a sidewalk that's really uneven or, um, I don't know. I'm sure yeah. you get that training in your walking <laughs> classes right. and, and all that. But, um, but anyways, so things to certainly take into consideration. And I'm going to put together also some um, communication etiquette okay. for, um, for including all, you know, inclusion sure. communications. Cause I really think about that when I'm, writing or designing a PowerPoint or, um, communicating on Facebook or, and, and, you know, it's because I think I've, I've been involved in this from such an early day, you know, early days of mm -hmm. having myself like an undiagnosed dyslexia and, and also being, needing that multi-sensory learning. It was so important for me to stick things to stick. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I really tried doing that early on. That's so I'll, I'll do a document that people can have and refer to for that as well. Okay. And maybe what yeah. I'll do is I'll send it to you mm -hmm. and then you can look at it and then you can give a little more feedback if I've covered everything or missed anything. Sure. Sure. That sounds good. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so I guess I'll close this out. I just want to say thanks to everybody for listening and, um, and hearing what we have to say. And we hope that, you know, this has started a dialogue, really, I think is what we want more out of anything Absolutely. is a dialogue that can continue. And, you know, if you have any questions, certainly send us an email or um, get in touch with us. And if it's directed towards me or towards Mario, we'll, we'll get it so each of us can see and, um, and get you in touch also with whatever needs you have. Right. So, is there anything else you want to say, Mario? No, I just want to thank everybody who's watching this for taking their time to to watch it. And, and I hope that um, that they have learned uh, something from this, this webinar. And definitely, like Kirsten says, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. No question is a silly question. That is so true. Wonderful. OK, thanks so much. Mm -hmm.